know a few uncommon antibodies are also given over there okay now today our main target will we will be starting today today our main target will be various important factors and proteins and important part of biochemistry clinical sciences important part of genetic disorder of clinical sciences and clinical physiology these are the topics of the day and apart from that i will also share some notes on anatomy we won't uh, otherwise discuss uh, anatomy because it is informative so there is not much of a scope of a discussion so we will be sharing notes of anatomy at the end of the class or through email whatever or this way as we have shown so uh, last day we have done the immunology part and important acute phase reactant parts and all those things today we will be uh, starting from certain factors important factors from where a number of questions you can expect in the exam so first factor so clinically import clinically and biochemically important factors and all of these uh, tumor necrosis factor into leukin cytokines everything will come into the picture one after another so first we will be starting with rheumatoid factor first of all important thing that rheumatoid factor is igm antibody remember it is and it acts against igg so basically they ask you about this this is an igm antibody now what is this usually what it does usually it reacts with the antigenic site of fc portion of patient own igg however the major question they usually ask about what is the type of the factor now how we can detect rheumatoid factor we can detect rheumatoid factor usually either ship cell agglutinations or ship rbc agglutination and it has a specific name that is rosewellers test or we can detect it by latex agglutination again for exam this is important ship rbc this is important for exam point of view now what is the positivity let's uh, discuss actually so since rheumatoid factor is an igm antibody usually remember that the its level is associated with the severity of the disease remember it is associated prognosis so how bad the disease can be but it is not a marker of disease activity once again not a marker of disease activity so zero positive rheumatoid arthritis high titer rheumatoid arthritis these are more severe features of the disease but rheumatoid factor more rheumatoid factor more active disease that's not the case disease activity can be seen by esr crp dash 28 score those are the number of um, um, you know joints are affected symptoms all this can show us the disease activity now rheumatoid factor is positive in 70 to 80% of ra apart from ra there are other conditions where rheumatoid factor may be positive so ra rheumatoid factor positivity we can see apart from ra shogren syndrome here almost all the cases of it can have rf positive we can have felty syndrome which is basically neutropenia rheumatoid arthritis and splenomegaly infective endocarditis it can also be present there sle also up to 30% of cases you can have rheumatoid factor positive systemic sclerosis it can have positive normal population it can be positive in 5% of normal uk population may be positive for rheumatoid factor occasionally it can also be positive in chronic diseases like tb leprosy or hiv hpv 
these are the areas and very very important remember in this two cases 100% of the cases so if rheumatoid arthritis is uh, uh, you know rf is positive so there's also a chance of felt syndrome basically provided the other parts are okay so this two try to remember sjogren syndrome and this where rheumatoid affected is positive now the next one in the line we will be discussing about ano which is nitric oxide so what's its function actually it is the edrf the other name is edrf that is endothelium derived relaxing factor the may as the name suggests its major action is the vasodilation apart from that it can also decrease or inhibit platelet aggregation so this is very good and protective against the atherosclerotic disorder now it acts as a signal in many processes so signal in various pathophysiological processes we can have no being positive from where or what is the origin of no that is very important l arginine so levo arginine is the origin of nitric oxide origin of nitric oxide again important for exam how it is formed basically this arginine is oxidized under the enzyme nos which is nitric oxide synthetase and remember commonest area where nos is present or usually derived is the macrophage so macrophage is one of the very common area where we can find nos what is the effect of no or how no acts so how no acts very important usually it acts by guanylyl cyclase so it is a cgmp gmp mediated pathway remember cyclic gmp mediated pathway usually decreases calcium whereas cyclic amp mediated pathway usually increases calcium so as the calcium is decreased there is decrease in the vasomotor tone leading to vasodilation also it inhibits the platelet aggregation so what is the clinical significance where we actually need no remember a number of hypotheses and formulas are there if there is a lack of no that can increase atherosclerosis decrease no formation may lead to or is seen in pyloric stenosis hypertrophic pyloric stenosis so these are the areas where no is implementable increase no is found in case of sepsis and capillary leakage leading to septic shock nitrates which are congener of no they are used in cv disorders for vasodilatory effects and also phosphodiesterase five inhibitors like sildenafil tadalafil etc they potentiate no action and leads to their vasodilation and leads to their action on the smooth muscle of penis so they are used in erectile dysfunction and also they can also be used in case of pulmonary hypertension because this can decrease the pulmonary vascular resistance so the, there is a lot of scope and also upcoming researches are in favor of further discussion or further uh, you know exploration of nitric oxide uh, synthetase and no action moving to the next guy that is natriuretic peptides natriuretic peptides so there are basically two types which are important from mrcp1 one is the atrial natriuretic peptide and the second one is 
B type natriuretic peptide. Now, where they are found and how they were actually uh, discovered, initially they were discovered in sheep's brain. So, from there actually BNP or brain natriuretic peptide that came. Later we have seen that there is almost similar kind of chemicals are available even in the human body. We can find a specific chemical atrial in atria that is slightly chemically different from the B-type natriuretic peptide. So atrial 1, atrial muscle or atrial myocyte from where natriuretic peptide comes, we call it atrial natriuretic peptide. And from ventricle, human ventricle, B-type natriuretic peptide is secreted. Both of them, as the name suggests, what they do, they do diuresis and they do natriuresis. This is their function. And always remember, if you get confused about anything, remember ANP or BNP, they are just antagonistic to RAS system. So whatever RAS system does, ANP or BNP does just the opposite. So what RAS system does, it increases the aldosterone, it increases the angiotensin. So it causes the vasoconstriction, it increases the serum sodium, it decreases the serum potassium. Here just the opposite. So here what we find, increase BP, increase vasoconstriction, increase sodium, serum sodium, decrease serum potassium. That's the function of RAS. So all the RAS blockers and all the uh, uh, you know, the like uh, the uh, ARB, the ACE inhibitor or renin inhibitors, all of them, they just do the opposite. Similarly, ANP and BNP also does the opposite. What it does, it decreases BP, it decreases serum sodium because more and more sodium is lost via urine. It can increase the serum potassium and it causes vasodilation and it causes diuresis. So, and whereas the RAS system causes fluid accumulation and overactivity may lead to edema, just the opposite. So, ANP and BNP. Now, they will, they might be asking you further basic question. So, where exactly, what is the origin of ANP in human? Always remember the origin is right atrial myocytes. So, origin is right atrial myocyte to some extent from left atria also they are secreted but the majority is secreted from right atrial myocyte from where they are exactly or how they are exactly secreted they are secreted in response to activation of low pressure baroreceptor now a very important basic science idea that see you all know about the baroreceptors and these baroreceptors are carotid body which is present in the bifurcation of the common carotid artery, close to internal carotid artery, in the tunica adventitia. If you pos if possible, you can also write this because occasionally these things can come in the exam. All the import, all the words are important. And where is the aortic uh, body that is in the uh, or in the vicinity of the aortic arch? So they are actually outside the outer layer of the vessels. That's very important. They are not to the inner layer of the vessels. And what they are actually uh, sensitive to they are sensitive to high pressure and they are sensitive to hypoxia always remember this hypoxia is not the blood hypoxia because hypoxia means tissue hypoxia so all of this like carotid body as we are mentioning or aortic body they are sensitive to tissue hypoxia tissue hypoxia. Now, this carotid body and aortic body, they are high pressure baroreceptor, high pressure baroreceptor. Now, there are another kind of baroreceptor which is present inside atria that is low pressure baroreceptor. And who, what is this low pressure baroreceptor? They are specialized, specialized fibers, specialized myocytes who can sense stretch. So they are stretch sensitive. Low pressure baroreceptor means they are stretch sensitive. Now you can tell me that when actually they can sense the stretch. They can sense the stretch when volume is more. So whenever RA is overloaded or atria is overloaded, individual myocyte will be stretched. And these are having low pressure baroreceptor capability, which will lead to increase ANP secretion. So stretch 
overload so volume volume actually stimulates the low pressure baroreceptors so basically towards to increase blood volume anp is secreted bnp also secreted in the similar way we are coming to that shortly now they act by a cgmp already you already know uh, what are the action action is the naturesis action is uh, bp uh, lowering and action is to uh, you know antagonize all the action of all the action of rest system bnp bnp is almost similar bnp is secreted usually from the ventricular myocytes ventricular myocytes that is also more in right side to left side always remember that right sided heart is a volumetric chamber uh, physiologically and left sided heart is a pressure chamber physiologically because right left sided left side like suppose left ventricle the wall is much more thicker much more contractile substance are present over there whereas the right side it is much more stretchable the capacitance is much more on the right side what's the function of bnp definitely bnp is Uh, the function is the vasodilation function is the diuresis and naturesis as we have mentioned and it has a specific function it can also inhibit the sympathetic tone it can also inhibit the sympathetic tone according to hello okay it can also uh, the sympathetic tone or also inhibit the rest system now remember uh most commonly or clinically significant areas where we can uh, find increased bnp bnp and it's a uh, prototype nt pro bnp this two are usually used remember one thing that bnp is increased in case of heart failure usually what happens in case of systolic heart failure or heart failure with reduced ejection fraction their bnp is very very high similarly nt pro bnp is also very very high or much higher rise of it is seen whereas in case of preserved ejection fraction still it is high but a little lower rise is usually seen so this concept may also be tested you have to look at the uh, range which is uh, being given suppose uh, normally bnp is less than low concentration um, um, suppose 100 uh, picogram if it is that is um, if that is the Uh, criteria in diastolic heart failure we can easily get bnp 2000 3000 4000 whereas in systolic heart failure or reduced ejection uh, level heart failure we can get bnp 15000 16000 20000 so market increase that actually points towards hfrf that is one important thing second area so diagnosis of heart failure there is one area where bnp or nt pro bnp is important n terminal pro bnp is important now second area prognosis of heart failure there is also it is very important so prognosis because it's a useful marker for prognosis as bnp will be going down day after day of treatment definitely you will say that heart failure patient is improving there are sudden other markers of heart failure that weight getting reduced sob getting reduced symptoms getting reduced bnp getting reduced oxygen requirement getting reduced so all these are features of improvement in case of a patient of heart failure also very important bnp can guide in the treatment modality for heart failure treatment modality in heart failure it is an useful distinguisher between uh, sob from respiratory rhythm sob from heart failure or cardiac rhythm so that bnp can give us a useful distinguisher between these two um, however uh, not in our country or not in their country bnp is not used or recommended for population screening eco is still recommended eco is all the all the first line not as a screening tool uh, in larger population but in a selected area we can check the um, uh, section or in symptomatic patients eco is the first line not bnp now we are moving